in the previous video, we have maximized the amount we can transport through a network. In this video, we have an extra dimension, uh, which is the cost. So we want to be able to achieve our objectives with the minimum cost, okay, or minimizing uh, the cost. So here we have our network, uh, we have our source at node zero, and then uh, we have two sinks this time, S uh, sink num number, uh, or node number three, node number four, both are sinks. Now uh, we have, let's say 20 tons of material at node zero. We want to transfer five tons to node number three, 15 tons to node number four. And node number one and two, uh, they do not have any material uh, to start with. Now, along the arc or path, we have some capacity constraint. For example, from node 0 to node 1, we can take only 15 tons at a time. Now, to take 1 ton, it will cost us, four. let's say, $4 per ton. Okay. Similarly, if from node 1 to node 3, we can take four tons at a time and each ton will cost us two dollars okay so uh, that's our problem our objective is to transport these 20 tons from node zero to three tons to node three sorry five tons to node three and the remaining 15 tons to node four and we want to minimize the cost uh, associated with this process Okay, so that's our objective. All right, so let's see, let's just have a, a rough uh, solution, right? For example, let's say uh, we'll take uh, 15 tons from node zero to node one, okay? So 15 tons. Now it will cost us uh, 15 times four because each ton will take uh, $4, right? So in order to take 15 tons from node zero to node one, it will cost us uh, $60, all right? Here we have 15 tons. Uh, as we need to transport uh, 5 tons to node 3, uh, but because we are allowed to transport only 4 tons, so let's say we transport 4 tons and it will cost us uh, $2 per ton. Okay, all right. So 4 is done. Here we still left with uh, 11 tons. Now let's transport some 10 tons uh, to node number 4. So we have 10 tons and it will cost us $6 per ton. All right. And then we still have one more ton left, right? Uh, because when we have 15 here, we have transported 4 uh, to node 3, 10 to node 4. And we still have, so 14 is done. We still have one more left. So the remaining one, we have only one choice. Uh, we have to transport it to node two, one, and it will cost us uh, $2, right? All right, so at this point, uh, we have four tons at node three and 10 tons at node four, right? Uh, since we already transported 15 tons to node one, we left with five tons here. So those five tons, we have to transport it to node two, and those five tons, uh, each ton would cost us four dollars. So here we have uh, five tons this time, and from this five tons, we have to transport one ton uh, to node three because we have only four here, right? So one ton to node three, and it's going to cost us uh, one dollar per ton. And the remaining four tons, which is at node two, uh, we have to transport it to node four and it will cost us three dollars uh, per ton so it would cost us 163 dollars uh, if we choose uh, the solution uh, we have discussed but let's see if we can optimize it if we can lower this cost okay uh, let me see yeah if we can lower this cost right all right so again from OR tools uh, this time uh, we are importing this minimum cost flow. So in a previous video, since we tried to maximize uh, the amount transported, uh, we used max flow, but this time we are using min cost flow, right? We are trying to minimize the cost. 
uh, exactly same as the previous one. Uh, here we have the start nodes, end nodes along with the capacities, right? So we from node 0 to 1, 0 to 2, right? So we have two paths. So here you can see start to end, 0 to 1, 0 to 2. Similarly, from 1, we have three paths, uh, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 2. So 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, right? So like that, we define all the arcs or the paths. And along each path, we have a capacity constraint, right? So along this one, uh, the first the first number in this parenthesis, it represents uh, the constraint. So this is 15, this is 8. So 15, 8. And the additional dimension we have this time is the cost uh, per ton, right? So let's say this is 4, this is 4. So we have 4 here, 4 here, all right? So that's what our network is. And then... Uh, we have the supplies. So to begin with, here uh, at node 0, we have 20 tons of material and there is nothing at node 1 and node 2. So let's say these are uh, them, some storages. Uh, this is where we produce. And our objective is to transport 5 tons to node 3, 15 tons to node 4. So that's why we said uh, it is minus because it is sync, right? So this is source, uh, these two uh, temporary holders. And this one is our sink. All right. So from this min cost flow, uh, we simply uh, uh, instantiate this uh, simple min cost flow uh, uh, optimizer. And then uh, we add the arcs, capacity, and unit cost. Right. In a previous video, we have added only the arcs and capacity. But this time, we have the unit cost as well. So the four arrays we have defined, uh, we uh, provide uh, to the optimizer, right? The start nodes, the capacities, and the unit costs. So everything, all the information in this video, we have captured in the form of these four arrays, and we have provided as an input uh, to the optimizer. And then uh, we'll supply the... Uh, uh, supply set the nodes we provide the supply set the nodes okay so here we are saying hey uh, we have these uh, five nodes 0 1 2 3 and 4 0 1 2 3 and 4 and at these five nodes these are the supplies we have so the supplies are 20 0 0 minus 5 and minus 15 all right and then uh, we simply uh, uh, ask the optimizer uh, to optimize uh, again under the hood lot happen uh, uh, iteratively and then uh, in case if the problem is ill-defined or for some reason uh, uh, the optimal solution cannot be reached uh, we are checking what's the status if it is optimal uh, then we are printing the optimal solution otherwise we are simply throwing uh, some error message all right so optimal cost uh, which is the minimal cost is $150. Whereas the rudiment, our solution, our initial solution, we have $163 cost, right? So it's good that the optimizer is able to find a solution uh, with lower cost or the minimum cost, which is $150. So let's see what uh, solution it came up with. Uh, again, it's it's a, it's very simple. So uh, accessing all this information. So from the model, uh, we access all the solution flows. I mean, uh, so basically we are uh, flowing from material or some uh, something uh, through this network, right? That's why that's why it is called flow. So we are extracting all the flows, and then uh, using this loop, we are uh, printing all the flows. So our cost at each arc would be uh, how much we are flowing uh, through the uh, path and then uh, the unit cost okay so let's see what the model is saying so this is our network right so we have 20 here we want to transport 5 here 15 here uh, through this network so the model is saying hey from 0 to 1 take only 12 units okay 
uh, in our original solution, uh, we have taken 50 units, but the model is saying, hey, you are allowed to take 15 units, but take only 12 units. So here we are taking 12 units and that cost us $48, okay, 12 times 4 because uh, the cost associated with this uh, route is 4. So 12 times 4, uh, 48 and then the remaining 8 units uh, take it to node number 2. So remaining 8 is taken here and that would again cost us 8 times 4, 32, okay. So at this point, after these two steps, we have uh, 12 here. Uh, the remaining 8 here okay now from node 1 with the 12 so it's saying take 8 units to node number 2 so from here uh, because we are allowed 20 so take 8 units to node number uh, 2 and the remaining 4 units to node number 3 okay remaining 4 units to node number 3 so this would cost 4 times 2 8 dollars so at this point we have four units here so we still need a uh, one more unit or one more turn here right whereas here we have eight coming through this path and then uh, out of 12 we transport eight so eight plus eight uh, 16 here we have 16 at node number two so from node number two using that 16 uh, the solution is saying uh, hey transport um, 12 to node number 3, 12 to node number 3 and then uh, 4 to node number 4. Uh, it's interesting because here we need only 5 units. We have already transported 4 units here. So the model is saying from node number 2, take 12 units to node number 3. Even though we required only 5 here, what we are doing is from node number 3, we are transporting the excess level units to node number four. Okay, that's an interesting solution. So, as you can see, uh, using these network optimizers, uh, we can maximize uh, the amount we can transport through the network. When we have some constraints like cost, uh, we can uh, have the minimum cost to achieve our objectives. Okay, uh, that's all for this video. Thank you very much.